welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a review on my Webley VMX 2.0.22 air rifle. First of all, let's have a look at it. If you can see it, you've got the writing on the side to show what it is. It tells you its power system for its spring. It's a POWR LOK, and I'll tell you a bit more about that in a bit. It actually got more writing on the side, tells you what it is, it's serial number, etc. You can get a look at the sights on it. It's got a muzzle brake on it. It's a synthetic stock with obviously a metal barrel. It is a brake barrel, so I will show you how to load the pellet and the common problems with the seals on them. You can actually see the seal when we break the barrel. Right. A bit of information on the gun like I said it's a metal barrel metal metal system at the top where the spring is fully synthetic for the stock it does come with a 4b32 scope on it if just so people are aware if people are obviously don't know what the four times 32 is what it means is it means the magnification in the object lens of the rifle scope so if you break it down the four times is the magnification that's how far you can zoom in for your target and the 32 is the diameter of your object lens so basically for your object lens that's your 32 for your magnification that's what the four times is so that's how far you can zoom in and out of an object so that's its magnification so if you're zoomed in on a target instead of it being one for one where I, I don't know for instance the guns right in front of us I can see it here for in order for me to zoom out for the gun I would have to move the gun away but with this it's four times the magnification so if I'm staring at an object it's four times the distance away from me from when I'm looking at it just if everybody was ever, ever unsure about what that means that's a rough idea on what it means to adjust the scope you take off one cap here which i'll do now it's a long thread and you can see there's a screw head on the top and there's loads of different dial settings around the around the edge of it for the diameter effectively this one here as you click it up or down makes your crosshair on the scope go up and down and you've got one on the side which makes it go left to right just if anybody was ever unsure I think whoever watches these videos kind of already know how a scope works it's just a quick insight if anyone's new right put the gun down tell you a bit more about it right this does have an automatic resettable safety what that means is you can see there the catch is on so that would be ready to fire so what happens is when you break the barrel what it does it pops the safety out so as you load it the safety is out so you cannot pull that trigger so that's what that means. So obviously in order to fire it, push it forward and then you can fire it. Right, that's that bit. It does have a, a true glow sight system on it. So if you didn't have the scope, it has this little red bar here, which is like a see-through red plastic. So what that means is you've obviously got your adjustable side here which i haven't removed because i go off the scope anyway what it means is if you've got natural daylight that reflects off this it has that little glow that runs right the way through it so you can actually see the dot i don't know if you can see it but you can actually see the dot when the light comes through it so it's quite a clever little thing with it i know it's only basic but it's quite clever right this is a like I said it's a 0.22 caliber which are 
these pellets here, wait, these are what I use, just so you can get the idea on sizes. These are 0.22 and these are 177. So you can get the general idea, two completely different sizes. So if you tried to load a 177 in this gun, it wouldn't have it, basically. Potentially, you could potentially damage the gun and it could just damage all the rifling that's in the barrel and just plop out the end. You could do serious damage at the back where the chamber is. I've never tried it. I wouldn't recommend you try it. The barrel length, so the barrel length, which is from there to there, is 17.7 inches. The overall length of the gun, so that is from barrel to stock, the overall length is 43 inches. The weight of the gun is about six pounds, seven ounces, give or take. It's not a heavy gun. Velocity is about 800 feet per second, give or take, which is round about 11.5 foot pounds. The legal limit in the UK for an air rifle has to be below 12 foot pounds. It works out round about 15 joules. It doesn't sound a lot, but it's it's a basic gun. They're not that not that expensive. I paid round about £125, give or take. That's what I spent. You can probably get them cheaper if you bought them second hand. Right, so what else to say about it? Everything is fairly straightforward. The stock feels absolutely brilliant. You've got these grooves and indentations from where you would hold it. So you've got a nice firm grasp when you're shooting. The trigger is a two-stage trigger, so it's nice and easy. It can be quite stiff sometimes if you're set at a target and if you're pulling that trigger, sometimes when you pull the trigger, because it's quite stiff, you do get that little jar, little shudder from when you're shooting it. The back of the stock, you've got these lovely grips here from where it hits the palm of your hand. You do have some really nice grooves in the, in the back here for comfort. Comfort? Comfort. <laughs> you do have a nice rubber end here where it sits into your shoulder. It's a shoulder bolster. Nice and soft. It's no sharp edges on it. It's finished really, really nice. I went for the synthetic stock because everybody goes for wood these days. I wanted something different. Quite stealthy look. So yeah, it's really, really nice. This one, like I said, it's a brake barrel, so it uses a spring piston mechanism inside the chamber. If I set it up, which is inside here. So as you pull that down, compresses air in here, like a piston with a spring, compresses that down within this chamber. So what that means is when the trigger is pulled, the spring is released, which then goes forward, which then drives a piston forward compressing the air in the chamber and the compressed air is then released down the barrel which then fires the pellet. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through to some videos of me using the gun and then see what you think and then I'll put you back on and then I'll give you a, a few little insights on what are my experiences with the gun. Me personally I do like it, it was my first ever air rifle I ever bought I will be buying some more. I do want to try a PCP because I know the more powerful. I know they're still under 12 foot pounds, but you can get them as a heavier weighted pellet. You get more of a splat really when you shoot stuff, which is good for me because I tend to destroy wait, anything from watermelons, microwaves, blah, 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 blah. Waffling on, but what I'll do, I'll put some videos on, have a look at the gun, have a look at me using it. And then we'll go from there, and I'll see you in a bit.
Well, welcome back. Hope you enjoy them videos. Like I say, the accuracy isn't the best, but you get the general idea. The video where I shot the microwave, I was only about 15 yards away, something there about. It had a really nice impact to it, which to me was spectacular, because that's kind of what my videos are all about. I am moving on to obviously review of some of my guns, because why not? I want to show them. I know, yes, they might be basic stuff, and yes, the cheapest you can get, but for bangs for bucks, they're so much fun. Right, I didn't show you this, but I'm going to show you now. No, I know everybody knows about which way to put the piston in, things like that, but the way you put the piston, the um, piston, pellet, sorry, if you look at conventional pellet, so obviously you've got the tip at the front, and you've got an indentation at the back where it opens out. What, what happens is you have to load it that way on. So effectively you're putting it inwards. So the tip, pointy end, goes forward at the end of the barrel. Never try and put them in backwards. That causes problems. The only reason why a pellet is this shape is because when the compressed air comes into it, it opens, literally opens the back up, which then forms a seal, and then it goes down the barrel. That's where you get the trajectory from. So that's what makes it shoot. Right, so that's that bit. Right, as a rule, it was a good gun. Nice, nice and light, lovely finish. Even, I like the way it feels for your grip because even if your hands are wet, you still get a solid feel because of all the grooves and indentations in it. So even if your hands are wet, like let's say you go on hunting, for instance, for rats, rabbits, etc. If your hands are wet and it's raining, your hands won't slide off the grip, even with gloves on. That's what I like about that. Sometimes you get them, especially on the wooden ones, and it's smooth. To me, when you're using it and it's wet, your hand does slip on, that, like on the stock for when you're shooting. That's why I've gone for this one because it's got the grooves in it. Feels good when you're holding it. It's a nice comfortable position. The gun isn't too long. It's just a right size for me. Obviously everyone's got different preferences on what size the gun should be. You can get rifles where they've got a shorter barrel and everything's pushed forward. You've got a smaller stock. Where you, you can get them where they're adjustable as well, but I've gone for the fixed. But you can get them with adjustable stocks you can get better scopes. So when you get this, you can upgrade it. You can get a bigger scope if you wanted to. You could replace the stock if you wanted to. You could change the tip of the barrel if you wanted. Me personally, I'm just gonna leave it stock, standard. You have more fun that way, so you can basically save your money up from upgrading this, buy some other, buy some other stuff. So you can buy like more bows or more crossbows, more pistols. So yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to save money and just buy whatever I can. Do reviews on it, have fun shooting stuff. But yeah, let us know in the comments if you've got one of these and if you've had any issues with this gun. I've had none yet, touch wood. I've had none yet. And just let us know your experiences um, and what guns you've got pretty much and if you want to see us get another gun which one would you recommend which one would you recommend me to buy within reason i'm not wanting to spend an absolute fortune there is one i would like there are quite expensive but i would like one uh, i don't know if you've heard of the zeus i think it's a 0.72 caliber it's apparently one of the strongest air rifles you can buy apparently it uses point like 72 cal ammunition could be tricky to get in this country but if it's below the threshold what is legal in this country and i've got the money i will buy one you can destroy quite a lot of stuff with that gun um but yeah uh thank you very much for watching don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel cost you nothing and thank you very much for everybody who has subscribed so far i'm up to 110 subscribers Yay! Doesn't sound a lot, but from where I started, 
it's tremendous and I am going to get t-shirts made up as well so if you do want a t-shirt drop us a comment and we can go from there I will put pictures on for the t-shirts I will be potentially making when I get them I've put in some orders for t-shirts so as soon as I get them I'll do a quick little video I'll lay them all out and you'll be able to see what they look like and if you want one drop us a comment but thank you very much for watching guys and i shall see you in the next video goodbye